Hello friends, welcome to the learning room. This video is designed to give you a brief understanding over data communication in embedded systems. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to understand the need of communication in embedded systems. Secondly, about parallel and serial communication. Thirdly, about serial data transmission method. And finally, about uh, serial data transmission modes. Before to begin, let us be clear about two jargons embedded system and communication. Nowadays, if we look around our world, we will find various gadgets like cell phones, digital cameras, home security systems, ATMs, and many others. All these are nothing but embedded system devices. Embedded device is an integrated system with some dedicated function formed with a microprocessor unit interconnected with electronic, optical, and mechanical devices which are specific to the desired application. Simply saying, embedded systems are designed to do some specific task rather than be a general purpose computer for multiple tasks. Embedded system contains two main elements. One is embedded system hardware and embedded system firmware. Embedded system hardware is nothing but it's a hardware platform on which the embedded system is to be run. This hardware will be based around a microprocessor or a microcontroller unit. The embedded system hardware will also contain other elements including memory, input-output interfaces, as well as the user interface and the display. Next, embedded system firmware. It plays a major role in embedded systems and it defines how the system should work. The embedded system firmware is in high-level format and then compiled down to provide code that can be loaded within a non-volatile memory or on flash of the microcontroller unit within the hardware. So as we have multiple interfaces to microprocessor unit in this hardware, we need to have to communicate between each other for the fulfillment of the application, right? So if you have a few sensors, big sensor, big sensors, that particular physical nature and which it converts into some analog form and that analog form is again converted to a digital form that could be understood by the microprocessor unit by an analog to digital converter so between analog to analog to digital converter and the microprocessor or the microcontroller unit we need one we need to have a some channel and they will require the communication between these two devices right yes then the next jargon is communication. Communication in general is an activity of con conveying information. In embedded system, it is a means of sending or receiving information between peripheral or between a microprocessor unit and the peripherals. Right. So these are the two main jargons that we need to have to understand before entering into this topic. Now come to the communication system. The basic elements of data communication system are three. Sender, receiver, and the medium or channel. Sender is a device that which sends an information or which sends a message. And the receiver is the one who will receive that information. The path to which data is transmitted from one device to another device is called transmission medium or the communication channel. It may be a wire or a fiber optic cable or something else. All right. So based on the medium, communication is divided into two, wide and wireless. Wide communication is considered to be most stable compared to wireless. But wireless enables the multiple devices to use. Each has its own pros and cons. But now we mainly look into wide communication. And the wide communication, we have two types, parallel and serial. Now, parallel communication. Parallel communication is the method of sending several streams of data simultaneously along multiple channels. Parallel communication is faster than serial. Apart from the multiple channels that which we require to send data, 
we required some additional signals in parallel communication. To synchronize the data, we need to have a clock signal or to phase. It's a clock signal is to phase the flow of that. And sometimes in bidirectional, we require a direction signal to control the direction of data flow. And sometimes uh, handshaking signals, right? Parallel communication are very first and suited for shorter distances only. In case of longer distances, it is not suitable. The reasons are the complexity of hardware and there will be difficulties in synchronization, right? We will see about synchronization in coming slides. And okay, width of the data bus decides the number of uh, channels that are required for the communication. Let's say if a microcontroller is of 8 bit bus, 8 bit data bus, then to communicate to a, some other analog to digital converter or some memory, the parallel bus will have the 8 bit. So it depends on the data bus of the microprocessor unit or the device that it is used for the in the parallel communication. So next is the serial communication. Serial communication is the method of sending data one bit at a time sequentially over a single channel. There in the parallel communication we have multiple channels and the data can be sent simultaneously but here in serial communication we have only one channel and the data is sent one bit after the other sequentially right this is the basic difference between parallel and serial communication a serial communication can operate on as little as only one wire right usually never more than four wires it is much more common particularly over longer distance due to improved signal integrity and transmission speeds in serial communication makes it to use even for shorter distances but compared to parallel as it uh, as the data is sent bit after bit it is somewhat slow compared to parallel but with the increased clock speeds of microcontrollers and the devices and due to the improved signal integrities it is also and due to uh, less density of wires it is being using a and many electronic devices embedded systems for shorter distance. The next is data transmission methods. In this first, we'll see the purpose of synchronization for data communication and the methods available for data transmission. However, a device is required to transmit data to another device. There should be some mutual, okay? There should be some mutual agreement between the two devices that is the receiver must know how to read the receiving data where the data begins and where it ends for this purpose we need to have a synchronization method synchronous and asynchronous transmissions are the two different methods of transmission in synchronous transmission method data transmission is synchronized by a clock here we require of two signals one is pulse and one signal it is called clock a stroke and another is a data signal so the pulse on the clock strobe indicates when the data is to be taken or when it is ready the advantage of a synchronous uh, transmission method is lower overhead and the greater throughput since we have a separate signal for synchronization there is very low overhead and thus the throughput is also more Practically all parallel communication protocols use synchronous transmission. Synchronous transmission sends data as one long bit stream or block of data. Synchronous transmission is faster than asynchronous because very few bits has to be transmitted. That is only data bits and no extra, con and no extra control bits. If you see here the sender and the receiver, they have two signals. One is clock on data. So with respect to clock, the data will be read uh, at the receiver end and there will be some mutual uh, protocol between these two and when, when will be the data is ready and when it is not and when a data is finished, a data byte is finished and when it will start. Right. The next one is asynchronous transmission mode. In asynchronous transmission mode, data transmission is not synchronized by clock, but some special signals are required are used along transmission medium only one signal line is enough and there is no required of any clock signal here receiver uses transitions on this signal to figure out the transmission bitrate 
and timing. The most common asynchronous transmission use start stop signaling. So before it starts uh, the communication, it will send some a level of transition to indicate that the transmission is going on. It could, could be more than the width of the actual bit and it will have some special length of character at the end to indicate the end of the data frame. It is well suited for applications where messages are generated at irregular intervals. Uh, relatively slow due to added control bits. With a synchronous transmission, signal timing is not required. Signals are sent in an agreed pattern of bit, and if both ends are agreed on the pattern, then communication time can take place. If the signal is not synchronized with the receiver, we will not be able to distinguish when the next group of bits will arrive. To overcome this data is preceded by a start bit, usually binary. The byte is then sent and the stop bits are added to at the end. The next is uh, serial data transmission modes. More direct the direction of flow of data from between two communicating devices. We have two types of transmission modes depends on the flow of direction of the data. One is simplex and the other is a duplex. And in the duplex, we have another two half duplex and full duplex. We'll see in detail here. The first is simplex transmission mode. Simplex transmission mode, as the name implies simplex, the data communication is unidirectional. A receiver cannot send the reply back to sender. A device A, the data can be communicated I mean the transmitter from device A to device B, but not from device B to device A under serial transmission mode. If the direction is only uni, so the data is transmitted only in one direction. The best example for this is the mouse keyboard. Mouse and keyboard send their signals to CPU, but never they receive any controls or something else from the CPU. This is the best example. Next is duplex transmission mode. Under this, we have half duplex and full duplex. Half duplex. In half duplex transmission mode, data communication is bidirectional. So in the case of simplex, it is unidirectional, but here it is bidirectional. But only one direction is allowed at a time, means the medium or the channel is alternately used by the devices. Means one, if one device is using to transmit the data, the other and the device we cannot use it for transmit data at the same time. But after completion of that transmission done by the device A, device B can again do that. So while device A is transmitting, device B cannot transmit. It will be in a receiving mode only. Similarly, when device B is in transmitting mode, the device A cannot transmit. It should be in a receiving mode. But as you see here, both directions are possible, but at a time only one direction is allowed. But here in full duplex transmission mode, data transmission is bidirectional. But here in full duplex transmission mode also, the data transmission is bidirectional, but both directions are allowed at the same time. Data can send as well can receive the data. Means the device A can send data to device B and can it, and it can parallelly receive data. Similarly, device B also can send and receive data at the same time. Full duplex will the throughput. Uh, I mean the communicate in so the the throughput in full duplex is more compared to other transmission modes. So these are the more transmission modes available in serial communication. Hope you understood the need of communication in embedded systems, the difference between parallel and serial communication, and the need of synchronization in transmission of data. Finally, about transmission modes and methods. Thank you for watching this video.